Welcome back to another episode of the Wang Reviewer. My name is Will, where I do tech review, tech tutorials, and tech unboxing. And in today's episode, we are going to review the Corsair Carbide 275R computer case. In today's episode is a follow-up to a video I posted on how to set up your cooling fans in your custom PC build. As of right now, it has over 4,000 views. And one of the commenters with the channel named Tar Jzar mentioned removing the cover off the Carbide 275R helped him reduce the PC temperature. This is something I've been wanting for a while now, so I'm gonna do an experiment, taking readings of before and after with the front panel taken on and off. All right, so before I continue, if you found this video helpful, please consider giving a thumbs up, like the video, and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. Any support that you guys give me is very much appreciated. All right, let's get to the experiment. The Carby 275R fits ATX, Micro ATX, and Mini ITX with seven expansion slots. Has a full tempered glass window side panel. However, in my case, I don't have any RGB lighting, so it's kind of a waste for me, to be honest. Yes, the plastic is still on the glass panel. I grew up in a traditional Chinese home where my remotes were always wrapped in plastic and I still have no idea what color my couches are because my parents have always lined it with either a bed sheet cover or some other couch liner. These habits are hard for me to break. It's, it's ingrained in me right now. The components I have in my 4K and gaming PC is AMD Ryzen 3700X, Noctua NU-U12S CPU, cooler, 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 1600 RAM, five Noctua 120 millimeter fans, an Asus ROG NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super, a Gigabyte G750H 750 watt gold power supply. So those are components I have in my custom PC build, which I'm gonna be measuring temperatures against. First part of the experiment is recording the system temperatures. I downloaded an application called HW Info. This is a free application that provides real-time system monitoring and the ability to record and produce a CSV file to review the data points. I wanted the, <clears throat> I wanted the test results to be realistic, so I based it on how I use my computer as a content creator and as a PC gamer. So the first test I did was I boot up the computer and left it idle for 30 minutes. I didn't open any applications or browse the net to make sure it was a true reading. The second test, I opened up a recent time-lapse video containing 1100 JPEGs and exporting it into an MP4 format in HD, which was 1920 by 1080 quality, using Camtasia 2019. The third test I did was exporting one of my 10-minute YouTube videos to 4K in DaVinci Resolve, and that file had a lot of H.264 encoding and decoding that needed to occur. The fourth test I did was playing a full hour of Destiny 2 on high settings at 144 frames per second. To reduce the variables between tests, what I did was after each test, I turned off the computer, let it cool for an hour, and then when I was ready to do a test, I would boot up the machine, start HW Info application, and then run the test against the application. So for instance, if I was using Camtasia, I would boot up the computer, open up the logging program, and then do my export to MP4 and Camtasia 2019, and I didn't, surf the net while it was exporting. I didn't do anything else to the computer to keep it um, stock in terms of the results. And I did, and same thing for Destiny 2. I let the computer cool down, boot it up the computer, log into HW Info, start the logging process, and then start running Destiny 2. Um, and I played for an hour, and I didn't do anything else in between that. I just wanted to keep it as true as much as possible. I'm hoping that this would have reduced some of the variables in my readings. Here's a quick overview of the HW Info application I use to log temperature readings. When you launch it, it will display the component specs of your PC build, as you can see here in this example. Click on sensors. It will display live feed of your sensor readings. I'm scrolling through all the different measures it records based on the sensor it has in the components. You can start logging the sensor readings and you can save it into a CSV file. Here's a quick look of what the CSV file looks like. I currently do some data analytics reporting as part of my daily job, and it was easy for me to tease out the information I wanted to report on. So I went through them and pulled out all the columns I was interested in seeing. So I was interested in seeing the temperatures, um, the RPM of, some of the fans, as well as some of the voltage being used by the CPU as well as the GPU. I suggest you pause the video here if you want to see what the definition means and how it applies to some of the data that I captured. I'm going to review three main categories as people are familiar with. 
the motherboard, CPU, and GPU temperatures. However, I do display the rest of the numbers for those who are interested in other categories. Test one was booting up the CPU and letting it sit idle for 30 minutes. The motherboard temperature was about 3.45 degrees. CPU is 3.41 degrees. GPU is 0.29 degrees different, which is negligible. This makes sense to me as the GPU is not being used at all when the computer is sitting idle. Overall, the difference across the board is less than five degrees. So in this scenario, having the front panel off, on or off, doesn't really matter. In test two, um, using DaVinci Resolve to export it to a 4K video, the motherboard had a difference of 5.86 degrees, CPU was 8.06 degrees different, and the GPU is 3.74 degrees different. Overall, in this scenario, I know the processing of an H.264 codec is primarily done by the CPU. And this reading makes sense to me that it would be a little bit higher. However, I wasn't anticipating eight degrees and the results kind of surprised me. In test three, was exporting HD video into Camtasia. Again, it was taking 1100 JPEGs and putting it into a time-lapse video. The motherboard had a difference of 7.24 degrees Celsius, CPU was 12.49 degrees Celsius difference, and GPU was 5.83. In this scenario, I really pushed the computer as it took 15 minutes to process 1100 JPEGs into an MP4 video. Again, this process is CPU intensive, and I'm still surprised that the temp was 12 degrees difference. Test four was playing Destiny 2 on high sings 144 frames per second. Again, I'm using an RTX 2080 Super. The motherboard had a 12.69 degrees difference. The CPU had a difference of 1.48 degrees and the GPU had a difference of 18.55 degrees Celsius, almost 20 degrees. This one was weird for me. I actually ran this test three times to make sure I was getting a consistent reading. Between the three tests, it was the CPU temp that fluctuated between 1.48 and five degrees Celsius. However, the motherboard and GPU were consistent within the two degrees of each other. I can't really explain why the CPU temperature was low. I anticipated that it would be higher considering when I was idle, the difference was about 3.74 degrees Celsius. Um, but I ran this test three times and I'm still not sure why the CPU was, had a low difference. However, the motherboard and GPU were consistently, consistently showing that it was a high amount. Here's the footage of the gap between the front panel and the case itself. It's less than half an inch wide. It makes sense as not drawing enough air through the slit to cool down the CPU. So remember, the data that I presented to you was done in a very unscientific manner. I only did each test three times, and so that's really not enough data points to give you a definitive answer whether you should take the cover off or cover on. Ideally, I would have done these tests 50 times to get a really good data sample to do the analysis on. Uh, but due to time and laziness on my part, I didn't really want to do 50 samples. So the results that you see today is anecdotal at best. So something for you to consider. In conclusion, do I recommend you leaving the panel on or taking it off? Well, it's really up to you. If you have the Carbide 275R and looking at the data that I presented to you, if you think from an anecdotal point of view that the data makes sense to you and you do 4K editing and you do high-end gaming, I would probably suggest that you take it off. However, if you're just using this case for streaming, for word processing, for light gaming, I would say leaving it on is fine. Again, that's just based on unscientific data points that I've shown you today. Uh, for me personally, I am going to leave the cover off. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and like the video. Consider subscribing to my channel. What do you think about my tests? I would love to hear from you. Please enter in the comment below. Thank you for watching and until next time.